Hello, Scorpio. How's it going? It has been a very long time. I recently did a video talking about where I've been, the things that God has shown me. So I am back. Uh, this morning, I did post um, a daily bread, which is all signs over on Patreon. Um, so that is back open again. The link is in the description box below if you would like to join over there. Um, I do plan on doing an extended this, which you would find over on Patreon as well also. Okay. Um, so we are going to go ahead and get started. And again, there are changes. Things are done a little bit differently. Um, I hope you enjoy this content. I've missed everybody so very much. And I hope everybody is doing awesome. Okay, just like I said at the beginning of the Daily Bread. Oh, and I'm using the uh, Biblical Tarot deck. Okay, so I'm using the Biblical Tarot deck, in case you guys are wondering or asking, mixed with uh, Christ Consciousness deck, Biblical Affirmations deck. Um, they all have scriptures on them. So just bear with me, check it out, see if it's something that you're interested in. But before I start, I do want to say God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. 1 John 4, 16, you are loved for who you are, not what you do. All right. So we're going to go ahead and get started. I just threw all of those. <laughs> Give me a second. Okay. Sorry about that. Let's let's start over. <laughs> I'm always start over. Okay, let's see. What do we have for Scorpio? In every decision that you make, base it off of love your faith, your hope, your faith, your love, but the most important one of all is love. Okay, when it comes to love and relationship, career and romance, or love and relationship, career and romance. Is that how we're starting today off? Something is really, really heavy on your heart. Okay, and this biblical deck, and it can be pertaining to a particular relationship or your relationship with something. Okay, and Jonathan made a covenant with David because he loved him as himself. For Samuel 18, 3, two of cups, the bond of David and Jonathan. These are just very significant relationships. Okay, so you can just take it how it resonates with you. But it's almost like it, it could be some kind of guidance. Now, the emperor in this deck is King Solomon. But I actually see uh, the emperor in this deck as God. Okay. So, and as you know, the way God speaks to us is in our heart. Okay. And usually something will weigh extremely heavy on our hearts. Okay, when it comes to direction, guidance, the answers that you're looking for and seeking, and sometimes it's not always the answer you want, right? With the three of swords speaking right to you. Okay, this is the Empress energy. That's the Mother Mary of Jesus. Mary, Mother of Jesus. Maybe something is backwards. You have something backwards. There could be denial here, but there is a lot of fear. Remember, perfect love casts out fear. God gave us a spirit of love, not a spirit of fear. Okay, so fear is not of God. It is not of love. Okay. 
The Nine of Swords, Peter denies Jesus. Then Peter remembered the word Jesus had spoken. Before the rooster crows, you will disown me, deny me, three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. You're holding back and refraining from something, and, and it could be some kind of a denial here. You have the Queen of Pentacles, well, the Queen of Grains and the Ten of Grains. This is God's promises. Seven of Swords, Jacob the Deceiver on the Nine of Swords. So you're being deceived in some way, shape, or form. Something around you is creating fear. Okay, but that is how the enemy deceives you. The enemy doesn't want you to be prosperous and happy. Oh, no. You have the Ten of Cups, the Ten of Chalices, and the Ten of Coin with the Queen of Pentacles. You have the Star, and you really need to listen to your discernment here because you have Judgment and you have the Star, the Star of Bethlehem. That is your faith. That is your hope. God gave us the gift of discernment. It doesn't matter what is happening up here. That's how the enemy, the enemy works. Projection, intrusive thoughts. So there is something, something Because what I see is God's promises to you. What I see are your answered prayers. What I see is the Lord giving you the desires of your heart. But what is this? What is holding you back? What is keeping you stagnant? Where is this fear coming from? What do you believe, Scorpio? Because this star card... Is your belief, right? Your faith and your hope. So there is an aspect here when it comes to what you're being blessed with. There is an aspect here. It's what you've believed in. It is what you've prayed for. It is what you've asked for, right? That is the surprise of God's love. So it's like you really need to use your discernment, okay, because this fear is a lie. You're being deceived. Okay, can the devil send somebody to mislead you, misguide you, lie to you, give you rotten opinion? Absolutely. This is also a test of your faith. You need to be very mindful because for some of you, this fear, whether this is family, love, relationships, career, okay, your inspiration, your spiritual beliefs, you are really being tested here because you've got uh, the two of swords. God tests Abraham's faith. Are you going to let your fear stop you or are you going to let your faith in God propel you forward? Sometimes what the Lord asks us to do, it doesn't always make sense. Right? So you have Adam and Eve. And you need to be very careful with this deception because when it comes to Adam and Eve, the serpent. Okay? Okay. The serpent and how the enemy works is almost truth. Okay, remember, believe and you shall receive. What two people agree on on earth, right, it will be given to them. So, Knight of Coin energy, it's about making a decision and sticking with it. It's your morals and it's your values.
because I feel like you're about ready to enter another season here. And I feel like that's really where it's getting real, real for you. Yeah, Satan tests Job. And that is the Nine of Wands. So in what way are you being deceived? Because you have the Ace of Wands, which is Moses in the burning bush. So he's being called. Right, that calling, that fire within. When it comes to making a decision, and it's going to be different for all of you. I'm not, you know, just going to sit here and say, oh, it's a relationship indefinitely. Because you've got income. You've got inspiration. You've got creativity. You've got family life here. Okay, so you're being called in some way, shape, or form to take some kind of action. There is some kind of change here. When the Lord saw that he had gone over to look, God called to him from within the bush, Moses, Moses. And Moses said, here I am with the Ace of Wands, Exodus 3, 4. This is the Ascension of Jesus, but it's the Eight of Cups energy. Okay, well, the ladder here. So you have the five of coin. That's the bleeding woman. Her faith is so great. She believed that if all she had to do was touch a thread on Jesus's, on Jesus's uh, garment, she would be healed, and she was. Right? He felt all the healing power go out of him the second she touched one thread. And that is God-pleasing faith. So I'm talking to somebody here whose faith is incredible, but you're allowing yourself to be deceived to a point of you're frozen with the nine of swords. Because the seven of cups is the temptation of Jesus. All of this I will give you, he said, if you will bow down and worship me. Matthew 4, 9 is the seven of cups. Okay, because if you can see, he's in the wasteland and he's in the desert. He has nothing. Okay, so you need to be very, very mindful that when it comes to making this decision, you have the soul, which is the creation of a living being. So if you guys have found yourself kind of feeling deserted or alone, lonely in the wilderness, like you feel like you don't have anything. Okay, this is like a refining moment, right? Trials and tribulations allows God to refine you or to refine you. That's funny, refined you, I was going to say, on accident. You yeah, have the Five of Swords. Oh, this is a burden. Oh. Oh, my goodness sakes. On the seven of cups and the five of grain, eight of cups, some of you guys, this is a bank account drain. This could be an addiction of some kind. You have the devil, Satan tempting humans to sin. Okay, this is bondage, five of cups, this is loss, grief, regret, guilt, shame, something is very heavy. Jeremiah's bird in the ten of wands, why did I ever come out of the womb to see trouble and sorrow and to end my days in shame? Jeremiah 2018, what is this energy stolen from you? Because you have got the most incredible faith. 
I feel like you're being given the answer out of this mess. Why does my camera look dark all of a sudden? I feel like the Lord is giving you the inspiration and that fire deep within. It's, it's like giving you an inspiration out of this mess, but you're still being deceived because you have the seven of swords and the nine of swords. Oh, yes. You have the king and the queen of swords. You have free will, right? And this is the thing, too. God doesn't change. The Lord does not change. Right? It's like you'll be given the same answer over and over and over again. Some of you are asking why certain things have happened. I'm not really seeing I know some of you guys might not like the answer. I mean, we have winning the battle, victory and success. You have the eight of wands, Philip and the Ethiopian, the feast of Purim, if I say that right, nine of cups. There is selfishness here. There's pride, there's ego, there's greed. Oh yeah, this came out anyway. The nine of cups, the eight of wands, and the six of wands. There could be somebody around you that is that is, you know, could be angry doing something for their own selfish gain. But it's uh it's creating a lot of confusion. And it's not leaving you with much. Like at all whatsoever, if anything at all, with the five of cups. Or I'm sorry, the uh five of grain. This is about you putting boundaries, right? Seven of wands, but this is David and Goliath. This is like a giant. Okay, so there is something here that is creating a lot of fear, a lot of heavy burden. It's like depression. You're not happy. Some of you guys, this could be a habit. And remember, Satan works on your weakness. Okay, there could be a fear when it comes to letting someone or something go, because God will remove people from your life. Okay, things, habits. So David and Goliath, David said to the Philistine, you come against me with sword and spear and javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defied. First Samuel seventeen forty five. For me, this is kind of like putting on that armor of God, right? Your faith, your belief. Because how Satan works is to steal your faith. Your faith, your belief, your love, your hope, your confidence in God. That's exactly what he does. And I see that's exactly what's happening. Like, there, there is no other way about it. You're, you're going through a trial, and it very well could be a test of faith. Because you had Satan test Job. Job was extremely faithful to God. And you know what they say is that Satan accuses all of us in front of God daily. So what Satan did... Took everything. Oh, what if I rid him with disease? Don't kill him. Right? So there is tests of faith here. And it's almost like you're being pushed. So you really want to look at this as well. Who and what is confusing you, causing you all this conflict and this heaviness? Because it's done nothing but deplete you mentally, emotionally, financially.
some of you guys be, be a leader of faith and not a follower. Okay, and I'm going to throw this out there because with the Five of Swords, you have King Saul's tragic downfall. Okay, that's a downfall of ego and pride. The Lord has torn the kingdom out of your hands and given it to one of your neighbors, to David. 1 Samuel 28, 17. So there is a, there is a very egotistical, prideful fall here. Okay, but the two of wands, Elijah went before the people and said, how long will you waver between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal is God, follow him. Okay, so I feel like you're being given a way out of a, of a very particular situation here. Okay, but it's like you're, you're afraid. It's almost like the answer is so easy and so clear. You're afraid you're being deceived here. I feel like intuitively, Scorpio, you know the direction to go in. You know exactly what to do. Like it is that easy. It can also be something in the sense of like when you think about it, you know, solving an issue or dealing with something or moving forward, dating this person or you know, whichever it might be. This is where that saying comes in. Let your faith be bigger than your fear. God will close the door if it's not meant for you. But to what degree are we not even doing anything? And I feel like this is what you're really needing to look at here. Oh, because well, you have the ace of grains. At the bottom of the deck, this is entering the promised land. Right? It's entering the promised land. You have God's promises, God's love for you, gifts for you, blessings for you. I and 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 this is the thing. It it's I feel like it's so simple, it's difficult. You don't know whether, like, who to invest your time and energy into. But see, this is where faith comes in with the moon card. It's not what you see. It's what you believe. And I feel like you're having a really, really hard time doing that. And God is so simple, right? That is the surprise of God's love. What you believe, you will receive. Okay, but in other words, all God wants is our love, faith, and trust in him, right? But it's like if we're constantly sitting there doubting him, you know, doubting our own faith in God, this is what happened. Seven of swords and the nine of swords. Yeah. See, this is King Solomon, the emperor. This reminds, I know it's King Solomon, but he reminds me of God. <laughs> I don't know. It's what I see when I see it. And that's on the nine of swords and the seven of swords. Some of you guys could be afraid to make the wrong decision. And that's scary. You're like, I don't want to make the wrong decision. I have had to face judgment and trials. Right? I've, I've been there. I've had the Wheel of Fortune in reverse. I've had judgment in reverse. The Lover's Card in the reverse. I've had the Death Card. I've had the Tower. I have been through it. But it's almost like there is a new beginning here. And now you're afraid to even take one step. So let's see. And really, this isn't important to me, the signs, but I just give them to you guys if it helps you in any way, shape, or form. Okay. Because I don't practice astrology or anything like that. But uh, we have Capricorn, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. You have Taurus, Leo, Aries, Gemini, Aquarius. I think that's all I see. It's 
like you're still sitting in this season, but you don't need to be. It's like you're too afraid to even move. Like too afraid to even move. I'm going to pull, um, I fix my thoughts on what is true and honorable, not this nine of swords. It's like you are so afraid to be deceived or that you're being deceived, you won't move. I can do all things through him who gives me strength, Philippians 4.13. Move. Move. God is my strength in times of trouble. He is there for you. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope in a future. Jeremiah 29 11. I am enough. 2 Corinthians 12 9. I am God's child. Who do you belong to? Any doubt in any doubts, discouragement, lack of feeling worthy or lack of feeling loved? Who do you belong to? You are so loved. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. First John 4, 16. He has plans to prosper you, not hurt you. So I feel like whatever, whatever this is for you, God comforts my anxieties. God hears my prayers and answers me. When I cry out, Matthew 7, 8, God rescues me from trouble. So why are you afraid to go down this new pathway is what I want to know. Did I not say this earlier? This scripture came to mind. I am deeply loved for who I am and not what I do. Romans 5, 8. I am worthy of love because God loves me. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 4 through 5. God does not forsake those who seek him. He loves you. Psalms 9.10. I have a spirit of power, of love, and of self-discipline. 2 Timothy 1.7. So when it comes to the self-discipline for some of you, you're having a lot of problems. Okay, maybe uh, stopping a habit or an addiction. Some of you guys are afraid to do that. If that is, you know, if, if that is how the, the spirit is working through you, right, to transform you. If that's what's heavy on your heart or every time you go to do something, it's like, I really should not be doing this, but you do it anyway. If God has asked you to do something or put something heavy on your heart, he, it, it's a plan to prosper you, not to harm you. Okay. I hope that this makes sense. Okay. So if you want to go on over to Patreon with me. The link is in the description box below. Over there, you will find uh, the daily bread. Okay, uh, it is all signs, so it's like bonus. Okay, so that is over there. The extended will be over there. The link is in the description box. I love you all so much. Most importantly, God loves you. You are loved. All right? I love you guys. I'll talk to you later. Bye.